Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to explain what an independent samples t-test is and show you how to conduct and interpret one using Intellectus. An independent samples t-test, or just independent t-test for short, is a type of statistical hypothesis test. In statistics, a hypothesis test is a way of determining the likelihood of some data under a given hypothesis which is called the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis for an independent t-test is that the group means are equal. In any hypothesis test, you also have to have the alternative hypothesis, which is simply the opposite of the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is the default hypothesis. It requires evidence to be disproven. You could compare the null hypothesis to the legal concept of innocent until proven guilty. Just because the judge concludes that a defendant is not guilty, it doesn't mean that they are innocent. They may have committed the crime, but there just wasn't enough evidence to say they were guilty. This also applies to hypothesis testing. We can't say if the null hypothesis is true, but we can say we don't have enough evidence to reject it. If we have enough evidence, we can reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative. Here's what it means to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis in the context of an independent t-test. We reject the null hypothesis when the group means are not very likely to be equal. On the other hand, if we fail to reject the null hypothesis, it means we don't have enough evidence to say that the means are not equal. This language can definitely be confusing, but the words are carefully chosen to avoid making claims that cannot be substantiated. We can't say whether the null hypothesis is true or false, only how likely or unlikely the data are under it. Now that we understand the hypothesis test, let's work through an example. In this example, we'll test for a difference in BMI between people following two different diets, diet A and diet B. In this case, the dependent variable is BMI, since that's what's being measured. The independent variable is diet and can have the value of either diet A or diet B. This is what the null and alternative hypothesis look like for this example. Here's what the data for this example experiment would look like. Each row represents a participant. The next column contains the BMI measurement for each participant. The last column indicates which diet that person is following, diet A or diet B. The general procedure for an independent t-test is to divide the dependent variable, BMI, into two independent groups, diet A and diet B. We then calculate the mean, standard deviation, and sample size from each group. Next, we plug those numbers into a formula to get a t-statistic. The t-statistic allows you to determine whether the difference between the group means is significant or not. The closer the t-statistic is to zero, the less significant the difference between the group means. Luckily, we don't have to do these things by hand anymore. Here's how you conduct an independent t-test using Intellectus statistics. I've already set up my data like our example, so let's open up my project. 
notice that I kept the variable names short and easy to understand. If your data happens to have missing values, please make sure to just leave those cells blank. When conducting an independent samples t-test, it's important that your dependent variable, BMI in our case, has the scale level of measurement. Your independent variable, diet, can be nominal or ordinal. Just make sure it only has two categories. Once you're sure your data is entered correctly, go to the Analysis tab. Next, select Independent Samples t-test. From here, we'll add BMI as our dependent variable, and diet as our independent variable. Now, click Calculate. The interpreted output contains the full APA write-up of the results. All of the relevant assumption tests are also included. In our example, both assumptions were met. If the assumptions aren't met, one possible alternative would be to use a non-parametric test instead. In the case of an independent sample t-test, that's the Mann-Whitney test. Now let's review the results. The interpretation of the t-statistic is included in the first sentence. In our example, the difference between the group means is too large to be likely under the null hypothesis, so we can reject it. In other words, the difference in group means is significant. The mean values are also reported in figure one. Keep in mind that statistical significance does not necessarily guarantee meaningful results. You are the expert in your study and your population, so make sure to take the actual difference in group means into account and make sure it's large enough to be meaningful in your research. I hope you enjoyed the video and that it helps you understand how you might use an independent t-test in your own research. Thanks for watching.